Hi, everyone, and welcome to our today's session. We're covering the topic of NDI support within Microsoft Teams. And I think that's very useful for a, a handful of people out there. Um, uh, first of all, let me say um, the audio won't be great and the video won't be great and uh, the content is what counts. And uh, let us cover why is NDI support in Teams uh, interesting to us? I think there are plenty of uh, possibilities or sceneries where you could use NDI. For example, if you are using um, live events in Teams, then you might not be uh, happy with all the possibilities given there. So having a small speaker window, having a large window for the uh, presentation um, or the other way around, uh, you would possibly like to mix up your speakers and the different streams. And, and, and this is exactly where NDI support in Microsoft Teams comes into place. You will be able to extract the video streams within um, uh, Teams and mix them together in, for example, OBS. And this is what you can see where I'm living in here. That is OBS, a software you can download and where you can uh, uh, take these video streams, mix them together, and then, for example, send them into a recording. But you can also send it into a live stream, like, for example, Microsoft Teams Live Events. So uh, you can put it together very well um, the way you want it, add some more content, and then send it right away. Um, yeah, the basic technology is called NDI. And first of all, let us have a look into Teams itself. So um, just to make sure if you're able to use NDI or not. So I've got my test environment over here. Um, I'm right within the Teams client. And by clicking on the profile picture, going to settings and then permissions, you can check if NDI is available in your environment and if you're able to use it. If that does not appear, your administrator might have turned it off. So have a look at it first and it's off by default. So you have to turn it on to be able to use it. Me in my case, I already enabled it. So I directly go into my meeting. I set up the NDI test drive and my colleague Alex is already inside. Let me just turn off my microphone and there I'm back with my second camera and I join the meeting. All right, there we are. And Alex is already there. Um, to be able to record um, the NDI streams, you first of all have to enable that broadcast, broadcast over NDI. Uh, that's pretty important because it will also send out a message to everyone within the meeting saying, hey, um, attention, this meeting is being broadcasted, just to let you know. As now you can see, I can also stop it again. So that's what we need our that's what we need our Microsoft meeting for our Teams meeting. I will just put it away and now again go into OBS. As you can see, I've got my second camera over here. So one built in, the other one for Alex, and the third one just to have a direct look. Um, and I will tell you why. Over here in OBS, you can see I can set up like different sceneries. Uh, my first scene is uh, only me using my camera up on my monitor. The second scene, um, for example, it mixes some content with the camera I'm using. That's what we can see over here. And let's say, yes, this is like our introduction. And uh, after that, we want to mix up the different uh, the different video streams we receive from Teams. We're going over here, another scene, and we would now add our NDI resources. You can see I can add an NDI source. There's no existing one, so I'll create a new, and I will call it this is me in the call, just for me to know that I'm using that one. Properties will open. And I can now choose a source. So um, there also is a uh, an on-stream for the active speaker, which is cool. So if you would um, yeah, put together all the different uh, streams and would, uh, would like to add the active speaker, uh, depending on who is talking at the moment, you could do that. I will now use my video stream 
And just for performance reasons in here, I will tear down the bandwidth and allow hardware acceleration. And what it does now, and I hope you can see the difference, it now takes the built-in camera from my laptop and places in here. Okay, I can, I can uh, move it, I can size it. So no matter what I need to do, but there's only one. And what we want to achieve is like, for example, have a online discussion and I will uh, add Alex the goat. Okay. And now again, I've got the possibility to choose. I will choose Alex. Also lower the bandwidth. And as you have seen, maybe uh, you can also use only audio. Well, hardware acceleration, there we go. And now Alex should join me on that screen. So there we are. And it's, yes, it is live. If I move him, yes, that moves. And yeah, we could have a very nice discussion in here in that scene. Um, I will also be able to, for example, uh, set the focus only on the second speaker and uh, yeah, hide my picture. Um, let's go that way. And uh, also, uh, if the second speaker might have a own speaking slot and we want him to be uh, like full screen, we again to the next scene just add an existing now, Alex the Goat. We say, okay. And there he is, or we would like to, I don't know, add some more content. We could also do that. That's still live. So that's still directly extracted out of the call. I can move him. And there we go. Then we're back. Here I am. And uh, that's how NDI basically works within Microsoft Teams. Um, as you can see on the right side here in OBS, that's what I mentioned. You can uh, start the recording, you can start the stream, whatever you want to do. And basically that's all. It really sounds much more complicated than it is. And that's what I like about NDI. It gives you a lot of functionality, a lot of possibilities, but it's very easy to do. Uh, once you've done it uh, one or two times, you can do it whenever you want. Um, just inform all the people in the call because if you're going to record, you have to let them know. And uh, otherwise, yes, have some fun. Let me know if that is helpful. That was all I wanted. And yeah, have a great day. So see you then. Bye-bye.